Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 148. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Tricks 146 to 154. Hey, trick 148. We have a table of data and it is not set up properly. But what we want to do is we want to extract a dynamic list. So if I select Baker from here, I want to put bread, cookie, flour, sugar. So Baker bread, Baker cookie, Baker flour. But if I select Handyman, I want it to give me a dynamic list here. Now trick 148, um, this is related to trick 147, 146. In 147, we did the same thing, but we had a good table. And this is the way you should set up your data, right? Here's uh, they're in fields, right? So the formula and the solution we did here was much, was much easier. We wanted to extract a record from a table and put it in a column. All the way back in 146, we wanted to do something similar. We extracted, extracted a record from a table, but we wanted to, to put it at the top of each sheet. Right, so these three tricks, 146, 147, 148, are all slightly related. Here's the hardest one, though. And this is, comes from the fact that we still want these dynamic lists in a column, but we have this badly set up data set. So we'll have to do a couple extra tricks here before we can uh, create that dynamic list. All right, so we want to uh, look at this table. And the, the main problem is we can't use these values because there's all these duplicates. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new column. So the first step is uh, to come to the front of the table and create a new column. And this will be. Now what we need to do is create a unique identifier in this first column here. So in essence we want Butcher1 and then we get to Baker will be Baker1 and then Butcher2, Baker2, Baker3. And the way we'll do that is we'll uh, make a formula and copy it down. Equals one cell to my left which will be whichever one Butcher, Baker, etc. And we'll use the ampersand that is Shift7. This is a join symbol that will allow us to take uh, a count if function and join it with this so we get a word in essence. Then we'll do the count if, C O U N T if, open parentheses. And what we want is we want to count. Uh, um, how many bakers there are. Now what we need to do is click on cell C14, but I can't get to it, so I'm going to use my arrow keys. If your arrow keys don't work, you can use your um, F2 key until you see the enter mode right down here. If you hit the F2 key, once I see the enter mode, then I can use my uh, arrow key. And then I want to hit Shift colon. The reason why I want C4 to C4 is because I need this to be an expandable range. And the way we do that is we double click the first cell reference and hit the F4 key twice because I want the dollar sign in front of the number. So when I copy it down, that's locked. So this is a cool trick because then it will, uh, right now it'll just see one butcher, right? But when it gets down here, this range will expand and so then the count will be two. Uh, and then we need to put a comma and now we need to get one cell to my left. And so I'll do my arrow key. Notice my arrow key doesn't work because the, I'm in edit mode, so I'll hit F2 until I see enter, and then I'll hit my uh, right arrow key. Close parentheses, and that formula will create a unique identifier. And this is a good trick, because we do get situations where we have this bad data and we want to use VLOOKUP or something. So creating a unique identifier like this is great. Control Enter, and then I'm going to double click and send it down. And sure enough, that worked fine. If you go down to this one and hit F2, you can see how that uh, green range, C14 to C17, expanded. Why don't we name this table first? Then it will be easier. We don't have to come over and get it. I'm going to name this whole table. And then I'm going to click up in the Name box. And I'm going to call this um, Table for Lookup no spaces and then hit enter table for lookup and you can even uh, click here and it's always wise to do this and then click the drop down and see if we can uh, select this and sure enough if it selects the right one okay we got it now we need to come over here and add data validation and I want to click in cell F14 and then hold my control key and then click in H14 and then in J14. I use my control key to highlight areas that are not next to each other, non-contiguous. And now we need to add data validation. 
Now, I have my list of names over here. So I'm going to use data validation list, and we'll get those names. A data validation is data, and then here, data validation, that's 2007. In 2003, it's the data menu, and then data validation. The keyboard shortcut that works in both versions is Alt-D-L, Alt-D-L. And then we want to say list, and then the source is, I'm going to have to click there. Whenever you see that little uh, collapsible box there, that means you can link whatever uh, the text box is to some cells. There it is. I'm going to select P14 to P16 and then click OK. All right, so there we have it. We can select a butcher, baker, and handyman. Now, um, I'm going to create a formula here that will work in all of these cells. Um, I'm going to actually highlight this whole range, and then highlight this whole range, and then highlight this whole range. Actually, I want to come back here and highlight this range again because I want the active cell to be right there. Now, you don't have to do it this way. You can just create the formula in one cell and then copy it down and then paste it in this column and this column. But uh, this, is, uh, this is a good trick because if the one formula here is going into all of these cells, we select these non-contiguous or these cells not next to each other and then create our formula. All right. All right, here we go. We're going to type equals if, open parentheses, if rows, and we're going to use our same trick because we need to turn this formula off when it gets down. If there's only three butchers, we need to go, go one, two, three rows, but everywhere below it needs to have a blank. So we're going to say if rows. Uh, we're going to click on cell one above and then hit shift colon. And then double click that first F14 and hit the F4 key once and twice. Right? This formula, remember, is going to be copied here and here. So it needs to be locked going down that little F14 on Butcher. But when it moves over to this column, it needs to be able to move to Baker. Close parentheses. Now, what are we going to compare this to? Is it less than or equal to? And we'll do count if. And now we actually need to count all of the values here. So if there's three butchers, we need a three here. So I'm going to highlight this whole range and then hit the F4 key. And comma, and then we need to click on this butcher right here on the same thing, F4, F4, to lock it going down, but not um, as it goes to the sides. Close parentheses. So this, this, this part of the formula right here, rows, it will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This will always be, for butcher, will be 3. So as soon as it gets to past row 3, it'll um, become false. Then we want to type a comma. Now what if uh, rows 1 and there's 3 butchers? Well, we want to do our VLOOKUP. So I'm going to type VLOOKUP. Now the lookup value is going to be the trick here. And this will be an example of how you can actually do a formula for the VLOOKUP. Because look, we need the VLOOKUP to be looking at this right here, which is a, a data validation dropdown. But we need a 1, a 2, a 3. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, click on this cell and then hit F4, F4, because it needs to be locked going down but not to the side. And we're going to have to do AND. Now what we want is in the first row, we want butcher 1. In the second row, we want butcher 2. In the third row, we want butcher 3. So we'll use our rows. Remember, this is a great trick that we've seen in um, the last trick also for creating a sequence of numbers as you copy a formula down. Control C. And then I'm going to very carefully click right there. Remember, it's usually safer to come up to the uh, formula bar. And Control V. So that's the lookup value. And this thing will change as we copy it down. Butcher 1, butcher 2, butcher 3. Then we type a comma. The table, I'm going to hit the F3 key, because I forgot when I named that table. So the F3 key. And then there's the uh, table name, table for lookup. So I'm going to double click it. If you knew what it was, you could uh, type it out. Or you could just highlight the range, too. Comma. Now, the column index. Now, we want, uh, if we remember our table here, we had to create this first column. But look. 1, 2, 3. So 3 is the column index we want. So we can just type a 3 here. Comma, and then do we want 
do we want an a, approximate match like for looking up taxes or do we want an exact match? Hey, we want an exact match, so zero. And then close parentheses on the V lookup. So now we're back to the if. So the double quote, double quote and then close parentheses. Now, I have chosen to highlight all the cells in advance, so the way I enter them all into all the cells is by holding Control and then hitting Enter. If you had just so exciting, let's try Handyman. No way, it worked, no way, it worked. Butcher and uh, Baker. So it totally works. That's how to create a 